Hello to all you knitting and crochet enthusiasts out there. Have you ever heard of a tech editor? Maybe you have and you're curious to know what they do. Well, I'm an experienced technical editor and trainer, and I am passionate about getting more knitters and crocheters, if that's a word, involved in this little known sector of the industry. I really want to encourage more people to turn their yarn hobby into a profitable business. That's what I did. And several of my students have done too. So the first question you may have is, what is a tech editor? Well, a tech editor checks a pattern from top to bottom in minute detail. Your clients can be designers, yarn companies, knitting magazines, and book publishers. Basically, anyone who needs patterns check in thoroughly. So here are some things that tech editors check for. They make sure the pattern works mathematically. And all the numbers are correct for all sizes. They ensure the pattern will produce the item as shown and in the correct sizes as given in the pattern. They check all written text is grammatically correct. They check any charts and schematics and make sure they match the details in the pattern. They may need to check against a style sheet if there is one and make sure the pattern style and formatting is consistent throughout. For example, are repeats such as brackets and asterisks used in a consistent way. Other checks would include making sure that increases and decreases have been worked consistently. For example, on a garment, do the armhole decreases match across the front and the back? Are all instructions clearly explained and make sense for the difficulty level of the pattern? Is the order that the sections are to be worked clear and do they make sense? A tech editor also makes sure that nothing's missing and that everything is there is needed. For example, in the abbreviation section, they make sure all materials and finishing details are listed. They may also need to give advice on making a pattern more concise if need be. For example, if the pattern is being published in a magazine where space is tight, examples of this might be, can any sections be referred back to in later instructions to say writing them out twice? Can any rows be combined in groups and then repeated? And so on. So there we go, that gives you an idea of what is involved. Now, another question you may have is, what skills are required to become a tech editor? There are a few, but not everyone will be at the same level. You can become a tech editor and concentrate on simpler patterns or techniques at the start. It's completely up to you. But here are some of the core skills. You should be an experienced knitter or crocheter who understands and can follow most patterns. You should have a good attention to detail. For example, do you spot mistakes in road signs, magazines, books? I do it all the time. You should understand the basics of text-based software, such as Microsoft Word or Google Docs, as well as PDFs. And you should be happy using basic math skills. You don't have to be a genius, but you should be comfortable with arithmetic. And of course, you can use a calculator. You may need to deal with multiple sets of numbers at the same time for a garment. So an understanding of spreadsheets can help. It's not completely essential. Pen and paper is absolutely fine and is what I use for a long, long time. You should have an analytical mind and be able to apply shaping concepts to an item without actually making it because a tech editor does not make the item being checked. The next question you may have is, are tech editors in demand? Absolutely, without a doubt. I have never been out of work since I started. And since the pandemic, more designers are springing up. I just want to show you some recent stats from yarnpond.com, which is a site where designers, tech editors and testers can find out more about each other. These are recent stats taken from there. So on this site, you can see there are huge amount of testers. There's 119 registered tech editors. There are 1,035 registered designers. And there's some other stats on that page as well. Now, what that works out to, this is just one site, is around eight and a half designers for each tech editor. Just one site. Now, bearing in mind that each designer usually writes several patterns, that's a big demand. And also remember, that individual designers aren't the only clients you can work for. There are also magazines, yarn companies, and book publishers. You may have another question. How can I become a tech editor? And how do I know I'll be any good at it? 
Well, I run live introductory tech editing workshops four times a year, twice for knitting and twice for crochet. Now, I have designed these specifically to give you an insight into the world of tech editing and whether it's something you'd like to do and whether you have an aptitude for it. If you do want to take things further after the workshops, then I run comprehensive courses covering the whole world of tech editing, where I set 10 assignments and I mark them individually. I don't just send you a standard solution. And on the main course, I also cover how to set up in business, how to price things, estimating, planning, how to get clients, and how to use social media to promote your business. So why not join me on the next workshop to see if this is something that interests you? On an aside, are you also a designer? I am both a designer and a tech editor. And part of my mission is to help designers understand the benefits of having their patterns tech edited. Think about it. How many times have you bought a pattern and it contained errors? Would you buy from that designer again? So if you are a designer, my tech editing workshops can also help you with your pattern writing skills. A number of my tech editing students have also been designers. And the workshops help them understand how to write patterns which are much clearer for their audience. Now, I'm sure you want to ask, how do I know your workshop's any good? Well, here are some comments from previous students. Here we go. So Tracy says, I'm so inspired after today's session. I believe in doors opening at the right time. After a difficult 15 months of being unfit for work, I can finally see a way of working from home that I get something from without putting pressure on my crochet design side hustle. So Tracy is also a designer as well as she's now quite a successful tech editor. Another one down here. My aha moment was that actually many books or patterns can be wrong. And I shouldn't think I'm stupid when it doesn't work out and believe there's a mistake. Also, that it's okay to contact the author and let them know. Yes, there are published designs out there that do have mistakes in them. And don't always think it's your issue. It may be the pattern itself. Marie says, when I was on the Profitable Knitter intro course, it was like auditing a set of accounts, but instead I was auditing a knitting pattern, which is a subject I love, and I didn't need a computer to do it all the time. I thought this is something I can use my skills for, and I can do this when I feel well enough and stop feeling so useless as I have not been able to work. Now, Marie is now a full-time tech editor, whereas she had been out of work for two years before that. Now, here's Louise. I've just loved doing this course. So thank you, Carol. Your passion for the subject just shines through. I gave up my job as a TA in December 2019 because I knew I couldn't spend the rest of my working life pushing round pegs into square holes. I plan to take a few months to consider my next steps, start teaching crochet, and then the pandemic hit and everything was cancelled. Crochet is the only thing I've ever been properly interested in truly studying, knowing everything about. So this could be my way into working in the industry. And doing the course has been fantastic after so long just doing my own thing. I can't wait for the next course to start on the first. Here's some other comments from Facebook. Tracy, great session today. I've loved learning new ways of seeing the other side of knitting. Mandy, thanks for another great session today. You keep catching me out with a sneaky quiz question though, Carol. I definitely need to slow down and read it more than once. Uh, Julie says, I really enjoyed today. So much fun in the group as well as learning. Thank you all. Louise, this year is a turning point to make positive life changes for me and setting up as a tech editor is a priority. I'm looking forward to the profitable knitticles and will do as many as I can live. Okay, now this last one is one that always brings a tear to my eye. This is from Ashley. Ashley's from Canada. I have people from all over the world, even though I am based in the UK. And here's what she sent me. She sent it on a private message. So I'll put it up here for you. Hi, Carol. I know you're very busy, but I just wanted to reach out and let you know how much I've enjoyed the course and how much hope it has given me. My current day job is in the court's criminal justice sector. I am constantly surrounded by negativity and evilness, quite frankly. I've been looking for a way out for years, but nothing has really called to me until now. Knitting has always been an escape for me. To potentially be able to leave the stress and the psychological damage of the courts behind and take a leap into the knitting industry is so exciting yet terrifying at the same time. You're not only teaching skills, you're also giving people a chance for a much needed change and an opportunity for independence. Thank you, Ashley. 
And that's what I really want for people. I want to be able to give them a transformation in their lives. And that's what I did for her. So you can sign up for my next knitting or crochet workshop by going to coolwoolschool.com where you can join the next workshop or simply join my waitlist to be reminded nearer the time. Don't forget though, that I only run these twice a year for knitting and the same for crochet. So why not make a change in your life just as Louise, Ashley, Marie and many others have done. And I would love to meet you soon. Take care and happy crafting.